Welcome to Celestial Chronicles, where we sail through the vast seas of time and uncover the stories that shaped our world. Today, we embark on a journey back to the ancient days, to a time when the earth was young and mysteries abounded. Join us as we trace the footsteps of Noah, a man of unwavering faith and righteousness, whose legacy transcends the ages. From the verdant vineyards he cultivated to the ark that sailed above the deluge, Noah's tale is a testament to survival, hope, and the promise of a new beginning. As we delve into his story, we'll explore how it echoes across different cultures and what it means for us today. So, grab your compass and set your sights on the horizon. Subscribe to Celestial Chronicles and be part of this epic adventure through history, faith, and the human spirit. Let's set sail and discover together. Noah is a key figure in the story of the Great Flood from the Genesis book in the Bible. He's known for starting the first vineyard and is the father of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. He stands as a symbol of a good person who made an important promise with God, ensuring that the natural world would be safe from another disaster. Noah's story combines elements from at least three different writings within the Bible. In the Bible, Noah is a good man who is the son of Lamech and comes from Adam's family line. God saw that Noah was a good person and chose him to save humans and animals from a big flood that would wash away all the bad in the world. God told Noah to build a big boat called an ark and to bring pairs of every kind of animal into the ark. After the flood, Noah, his family, and the animals were safe, and all people today are said to come from Noah's family. This story is important because it shows how Noah's family line led to Abraham, who is a key figure in the faith of Israel. The story of the flood has close affinities with Babylonian traditions of apocalyptic floods in which Utnapishtim plays the part corresponding to that of Noah. These mythologies are the source of such features of the biblical flood story as the building and provisioning of the ark, its flotation, and the subsidence of the waters, as well as the part played by the human protagonist. Tablet 11 of the Gilgamesh epic introduces Utnapishtim, who, like Noah, survived cosmic destruction by heeding divine instruction to build an ark. The religious meaning of the flood is conveyed after Noah's heroic survival. He then built an altar on which he offered burnt sacrifices to God, who then bound himself to a pact never again to curse the earth on man's account. God then set a rainbow in the sky as a visible guarantee of his promise in this covenant. God also renewed his commands given at creation, but with two changes, man could now kill animals and eat meat, and the murder of a man would be punished by men. Despite the tangible similarities of the Mesopotamian and biblical myths of the flood, the biblical story has a unique Hebraic perspective. In the Babylonian story the destruction of the flood was the result of a disagreement among the gods, in Genesis it resulted from the moral corruption of human history. The primitive polytheism of the Mesopotamian versions is transformed in the biblical story into an affirmation of the omnipotence and benevolence of the one righteous God. Again, following their survival, Utnapishtim and his wife are admitted to the circle of the immortal gods, but Noah and his family are commanded to undertake the renewal of history. The narrative concerning Noah in Genesis 9 verses 20-27 belongs to a different cycle, which seems to be unrelated to the flood story. In the latter, Noah's sons are married and their wives accompany them in the ark, but in this narrative, they would seem to be unmarried, nor does the shameless drunkenness of Noah accord well with the character of the pious hero of the flood story. Three different themes may be traced in Genesis 9 verses 20-27, first, the passage attributes the beginnings of agriculture, and in particular the cultivation of the vine, to Noah, second, it attempts to provide, in the persons of Noah's three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, ancestors for three of the races of mankind and to account in some degree for their historic relations, and third, by its censure of Canaan, it offers a veiled justification for the later Israelite conquest and subjugation of the Canaanites. Noah's drunkenness and the disrespect it provokes in his son Ham result in Noah's laying of a curse on Ham's son Canaan. This incident may symbolize the ethnic and social division of Palestine, the Israelites, from the line of Shem, will separate from the pre-Israelite population of Canaan, which is depicted as licentious, who will live in subjection to the Hebrews. In ancient Israel, people knew about Noah even before the Bible was fully written. The prophet Ezekiel described Noah as a special person, a model of righteousness, who would be spared from God's anger. In the New Testament, Noah is mentioned in Jesus' family tree, connecting him to Adam. Jesus also talked about the flood that happened during Noah's time as a lesson for baptism. Noah was like a preacher, urging people to change their ways. It's a story of hope and second chances. As we conclude our voyage with Noah, we're reminded of the resilience and hope that his story brings. Celestial Chronicles invites you to ponder, how do the tales of old influence our lives today? What lessons can we draw from Noah's unwavering faith in the face of adversity? Noah's journey was not just about survival, it was about starting anew, 
about the promise of a better tomorrow. His legacy is not only in the past, but also in the vibrant rainbow of possibilities for our future. So, what do you think? How does Noah's story resonate with you? Share your thoughts and join the conversation below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more captivating tales from Celestial Chronicles. Together, let's keep the spirit of exploration alive.